Okay, I am so excited. Pam, thank you so much for joining. Um, I love your topic, first of all, because we don't know what's kind of sneaking up on us in our homes, right? So Pam yeah. Schmidt teaches modern families how to reduce toxins in their home and body so they can live a healthy, energetic, and fulfilling life. She helps them set up simple tools in the kitchen, the bathroom, medicine chest, diet, and daily routines to establish clean living habits for a lifetime. And I'm excited to learn from you. So I'm going to actually share your slides for you because we've had some great fun stuff. <laughs> Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for letting me join in. And April, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, we had, I live in Central California, Fresno County, and we don't get summer thunderstorms. And we got one last uh, early this morning, and I'm without power right now. So I'm kind of juggling stuff between my phone and my computer to make this be successful. So my and question, making it work. yeah, you got to make it work. So, um, my question for you is on the screen, is your nose a portal to peril? And to me, with all of the current uh, action figures and Marvel movies and all of that stuff, this just kind of struck a nerve with me and I went, that's my title. So what I wanna bring to you is this, um, there are a lot of toxins in our everyday lives and I don't wanna scared and hiding behind you know, a bush, but there are actions we can take that will help improve our health. When, um, you know what, April, let's go to the next slide because what I want to okay. point to you is there are, there are eight ways that, or it says seven here, see, since then I added, there are seven ways toxins <laughs> can impact our health. The first one, toxins can poison the enzymes. So that's impacting our hemoglobin production. It reduces our hemoglobin production and more free radicals are uncontrolled in our bodies. That leads to aging. So number two, um, toxins can displace calcium and um, the minerals in our bodies. That causes weaker bones. When our bones are weaker, our body puts out and can't deal with toxins. Um, number three, toxins can damage our organs, our gut, our liver, our kidney, and all of these are the main detoxifiers in our body. So if you're, they're toxic, you can't detox. It's a scary cycle. And number four is it, toxins can damage our DNA. This slows our repair. It means faster aging. The pesticides and phthalates and estrogens all have benzene, which is one of the bigger ones that impacts our uh, DNA. Number five, it alters gene expression. And that's just about everything who we are and, and how things work in our body. Number six, gene, uh, the toxins affect the genes so that they can't turn off and on to the body's demands. So this leads to further toxic exposure in seven, Toxins can damage the cell membranes, and now they don't respond to action signals such as needing to uh, produce insulin after sugar and that kind of thing. And the last one I have is it causes hormone imbalance because toxins induce actions in our bodies, they mimic, and they block hormones. And everything that our body depends on has to do with hormones. I'm ready for the next slide. I have a great, um, great quote by Arthur Schopenhauer. And his quote is, the greatest of follies is to sacrifice health for any other kind of happiness. And, you know, there are so many times when we think, oh, I just want to use that bleach just one time. I, that will make me happy to think that <laughs> my clothes are clean in that way or whatever it is, a certain food that you know is not good for you and you're eating it just for a little short-term happiness. We need to look at the long-term and, and do things that support our health and getting rid of toxins is part of that. So my calling is to help families with simple and effective ways to reduce their toxic load. And the reason I do this, I want people to be able to live a happy, healthy life. So is your nose a portal to peril? That's our topic for today. 
what I want to say to you is if you're really wanting to reduce toxins, toxins in your home, the number one thing you can do is to improve the air quality in your home. Hmm. So when we are working on the air quality in our homes, one thing we're going to look at is fragrances, probably limiting fragrances or at least getting our fragrances in our home to be more of the natural base. The air quality is a huge way that you can determine and influence your overall health. And so the reason we look at this is air quality molecules take a route that impact our body. They enter the portal, the nose, and then from the nose, they go into the lungs. And from the lungs, these molecules go into the bloodstream and then they go to the brain and to the organs. It, it really takes a scary path when you think of brain and organs being impacted by toxic molecules from fragrance. So how we impact and improve our air quality is through controlling fragrances, as I said. Now, we're looking at household products on this slide that have toxic fragrance. There's a lot of them. Fragrance has become more important in the last 10 years than ever before. You know, we see it. I saw one lately where they're advertising trash bags with a new cherry fresh scent. It's like, Really? <laughs> you know, take the trash out and <laughs> get rid of the smell. But here are things that have toxic product, uh, air, air quality products. You know, perfumes, air, uh, air fresheners, plug-ins, laundry products, cosmetics, deodorant, hair products, dish soap, lotion, nail polish, makeup remover, bleach and bleach powder, you know, that Mountain Fresh scent added to it, kitchen sprays, sunscreen, bug repellents, uh, diapers. Lately, I've seen toilet paper. So, you know, those are things that we need to be aware of and just start thinking. Maybe you don't get rid of all of it at once, but some of those things might go out of your life. So why do we do this? Let's go to the next slide, I think. Oh, well, it's okay. We'll, we'll keep that. Why do we look at fragrance in terms of toxins? Well, synthetic fragrance, that's a source of VOCs, volatile organic compounds. And these are molecules, molecules that we smell when we, have, when we sense fragrance. Fragrance, volatile organic compounds can attach to, to dust particles. So if you have toilet paper with fragrance in it, you know how sometimes that dust sets off or you've sprayed your um, Glade air freshener eventually it all falls down, right? And it gets to the ground. And at the ground level in our homes, there's dust. Sorry. I, I, you know, or the back of your book cabinet, you know, you've dusted the front and all that, but there's always that little area. There's dust and you see it when the sunlight show, shines through it. Well, when synthetic VOCs attach to dust particles, now we're breathing them in repeatedly throughout the day in our homes. And part of these VOCs is something called microplastics. And my, microplastics are part of a fragrance from, uh, in some products and those attach to dust particles too. In the last couple of months, I've uh, seen some headlines and, and there's some research that shows that these microplastics are now being found in the lungs and not just on the outer surface, but they are deep, deep wow. in the lung area. And some questions are coming up about masks, but there are also questions that tie to synthetic fragrance. So what, let's look right now at some of the toxic fragrance names. And I'll tell you, memorize all of these. You know, what, what I look at for um, ingredients involves names that I can't rattle off the tip of my tongue. So uh -huh. I would, I would recommend if you're going to do something with this, um, this list, because um, they are going to be some of the top names for toxic fragrance names. And some of them like limonene, limonene, those are ones that we even hear tied to um, 
essential oils, good quality essential oils. But, you know, if you're getting too much, your body even will be unhappy with that. So the, the last one on the right has the asterisk, that's phthalates. And that one is, I mean, they're all nasty, but that one's really nasty. Um, the reason why <clears throat> is it is hidden quite often in the ingredient list under the term fragrance. And phthalates, they really disrupt your hormone system. They mimic hormones. They throw off all, uh, the endocrine system, which is all of those hormones in your body. So, you know, it, it, phthalates is one you might have been seeing in different articles, different memes and stuff like that. Attention has really been drawn to phthalates lately. Um, I also want to say, you know, there are short-term risks being exposed to VOCs, such as headaches, dizziness, drowsiness, nausea, eye and respiratory issues. And then if there's prolonged exposure, you're going to have long-term effects such as liver, kidney, and nervous system damage. So the VOC benzene is one of the nasty ones too, and that has been proven to cause cancer. So we're looking at, you know, some pretty serious stuff if we live in a time of uh, synthetic fragrances. So I want you to just take a moment and just think of the things that contain fragrance in your kitchen. You know, it might be part of your kitchen spray. It might be an air freshener. It might be in um, your stainless steel cleaning uh, liquids or whatever you use. Think of fragrance that is involved in laundry products. There's a lot there. And it could be, you know, your um, softener, your fabric softeners, your laundry sheets, your detergent. It could be in bleach if you're using that. Let's look to it, cosmetics. Almost everything we apply, we're looking at, we're enjoying the fragrance that, it's, that is involved in that, let alone perfumes. Sometimes our food might get fragrance in it. Just consider if you're using a highly fragrant uh, dish soap and you've washed something and you didn't rinse it completely well, some of that fragrance is there and then your food gets on it. You might not taste it, but some of those molecules are getting inside. Um, and then there are other fragrances in our homes that we're not aware of that we might not pick up on, such as what has been used to put, put, build our house like walls, uh, cheaper furniture, my mouth is going bleh. cheaper furniture that has been glued together has a lot of fragrance in it. So those things are going through your air in your home. So I also want to point out to you, the big thing about toxic fragrance is a lot of them are petroleum based. Petroleum does not belong in our bodies. Our body doesn't know how to process that. And that again can cause cancer, organ damage, skin irritation. And again, those phthalates are endocrine disruptors for our hormones. So there's quite a lot to look at there. I want to point out to you, did I skip a, no, I didn't. Okay. So if you're looking in comparison to something like simple green lemon fragranced cleaner versus fresh lemons, there's emotional effects that come to fragrance. And then there's physical effects that come along with fragrance. And we might have, we and, I think you skipped out right after the emotional effect and physical effect. Okay. So I'm just resuming. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> so there, um, when you work with lemon, fresh lemon, and I'm a California person, so, you know, I love my citrus, but lemon can reduce anxiety and depression symptoms. It can help with morning sickness it can act as a pain reliever, it can help you breathe easier, it can help you be alert, as well as just simple lemon has cleaning products, uh, cleaning 
effects in it where it's high in citric acid. It's one of the best natural cleaners. It's low in pH and it's got antibacterial properties. You compare that to the simple green lemon scent stuff and all of a sudden you've got a lot of chemicals in it, which, you know, some do the job, but there's fragrance in there. There's fragrance and, and that fragrance is most likely not from the natural lemon. It's something done in a lab, which messes with your bodies. So I like to point out when our bodies get what it, they need, they need, yeah, then we can have just a, a happy, healthy life. Um, you've seen the chemicals here. Let's go to the next slide. And I want to look again at health risks. We've talked about them. I just want you to see them because that gets into the brain a little bit, bit better. We've got, you know, cancer, kidney damage, irritation to eyes, nose, mouth, irritation to the GI, the intestinal tract, headaches, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, you know, confusion, stupor, drop in blood pressure. Then, you know, it goes on and on. You might not sense that just putting on some perfume or spraying your Glade. But when you consider how many layers of fragrance we've got going on with different products in our homes, it really is something that can build up kind of quickly. So let's go to the next slide. I want to just quickly talk about ingredients on a label. A big thing that I point out is we need to be looking at ingredients on labels. And I know it's not fun and you might have to get a magnifying glass, but mm -hmm. this is part of limiting the toxins. Look for the phrase fragrance or parf parfum or perfume. Fragrance is a term that can mean a cocktail of up to 100 ingredients in just one product. That frightens me. And... Yeah verify the front label because it might say natural fragrance but you read the back and you find that it's not natural fragrance they just use the word fragrance and they're hiding all these chemicals natural fragrances on the front can really mean it's just just as toxic and synthetic so it's it's really up to us to be watching for these things let's go to the next Thing. Now, this is on my phone, this is very little, but I have some photos of ingredients and I want you to know whatever is at uh, the top of the list is what is contained most in the product. It has the greatest volume and often fragrance is at the bottom, but if it's toxic stuff and it's at the bottom, it's still going to be toxic. So we see on this product at the bottom, it says fragrance allergens. So at least they admit that these are <laughs> allergens mm -hmm. and they're probably on that toxic list, but they don't tell you. Let's go to the next slide. Then we have other products and believe me, I know it's little, but you know, when you look at this, it again is going to say plant derived fragrance. Do we know what that means? Are they explaining their process? And, and so that's something to just be aware of. I would not be as comfortable with this. I would rather see it say lemon peel, lavender flowers, you know, not lavender fragrance or that kind of thing. Let's go to the next slide. That might be easier to read. And this one, it says it contains fragrance allergens. So it's straight out there. And to me, this is a product then I would not be buying. Let's go to the next slide. I can't remember how many of these I have. This one says it contains fragrance allergens. So you, you pretty much can know, okay, avoid that, we're okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. This is toilet paper. Wow. Now it says fragrance perfume, and this is what we're applying to our most tender skin. The genital skin and the underarm skin are the most tender, they absorb up to 100% of what we apply to them. So if you have artificial fragrances in your deodorant, it's just going straight in. So this one, this next slide is looking at the um, a cleaning product. On my phone, I can't see what it is. Is it simple green? Yes. Simple green versus lemon. And 
I just want you to look on the far right. And they're saying that in the EU, the European Union, these three ingredients are on the allergen list. I do want you to know that America is much more lax about uh, limiting synthetic fragrance. It, I, a lot of times what I'm judging by is in terms of toxins is looking at what does the EU or what is what do other countries in Europe allow because they're more strict on it and America is not as careful about it. So let's go to the next slide. I'm not sure where we're at. Okay, so now that we're scared about the things everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you some hope. There are things that we can do to improve our home air quality and reduce those VOCs. So get rid of synthetic fragrances, get rid of the plugins, the sprays, the candles, um, and all of those kinds of things. You can go with no fragrance, but that's hard. It's hard for people. Um, you can go with more natural fragrance, such as the essential oils or real potpourri, not perfumed potpourri. Open the windows daily, you know, for 10 minutes, you know, check your outdoor air quality. If it's bad, don't open your windows. Instead, get an air purifier and move that air purifier around the house if you have to. My favorite one is rooms. Um, these air, these plants can help reduce the air quality. They raise not as powerful as some of these other options. So you might need more plants, darn it. <laughs> you don't mind that at all. And it, plants offer a very good emotional side too, which we're not talking so much about today. But plants that you would look at Snake plant, pothos, ivy, spider plant, aloe, palm, Chinese evergreen, all of those. So, um, and you know, if you have an upset day, just go and just touch the leaves a little. It does a lot for raising your raising your spirits. So, my story. I'll, I'll just tell you quickly. I think I'm done with slides now, April. Okay, awesome. My my story is this. I have been a fragrance addict. And my adult son is very much in my footsteps. I, as a school teacher, wanted people to smell my perfume when they walked into my room. And I had those little glade gel things that you'd lift and, you know, they'd disappear over time. I, you know, would spray stuff around the room and my home was that way. You know, we were just, I wanted people to smell. And I thought that that would make me raise my spirits. And eventually over time, um, I started using more natural cleaners that had less fragrance, not, no artificial fragrance. I started using essential oils in the home for the fragrance. I used it, I blended my own for perfume and all of that. I even added essential oils to my drinks. Then I had some chronic eye issues and I went to a new nutritionist and she said, you are coming up with showing fragrance. And I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't use perfume. She said, you're coming up with fragrance as an irritant. And we pinned it down to my use of essential oils. And so I've, I had to be grounded from using essential oils for a while. I sneak them back, but my body doesn't want a lot of fragrance yet emotionally, I'm still addicted. And my son, our son borrowed our car a couple of weeks ago. And I'm telling you, his cologne is still in that car. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. I know that happens. Oh. So it is an addictive point. And so there is an emotional side to getting rid of fragrance and reducing it in your home. I'll just finish up by telling you there's a spiritual reason why I'm called to help people reduce toxins in general. And it is because I believe God gave me this gift of my body. It might have that where I don't want it and all of that, but it functions and it takes care of itself. And it has supported me through 64 years. And I expect it to last me past 85, like my parents. So you know, I want to do what I can. I can't just abuse my body. And in addition to that, my husband is recovered from 
tuber tuberculosis he had it 35 years ago. And he has his own struggles with endurance and all of that. So I'm doing it for my family and for myself. So <clears throat> if you look at this and you say, this is too hard, I can tell you, I'll bring back my old kindergarten teacher days where there's statements that we make to ourselves like, I can do hard things, or I'm not good at it yet, but we don't have to be afraid of it. And so I really think I can wrap up my talk right now saying, I really want people to find a happy, healthy life. And if I can be part of it, I'd love to. I love all of that information. Oh my goodness, I'm geeking out. Um, well, and it's, you know, just those things like the microplastics and the things that you don't realize, they're even finding like microplastics in untouched rivers so north in Canada because of what the fish are getting into. And oh. it's just everywhere. It's pretty pervasive. But our bodies can, can handle it if it's not overburdened by these other things. So Absolutely. I love even just learning that too much essential oils might not be good either. So mm -hmm. super valuable. And thank you so much for sharing. And we're going to put how you, we can contact you in the comments and you've got some awesome resources on your website. So great. Thrilled that you took the time today. Thank you so well, much. I'm going to stop recording here and we'll go to question answer. <clears throat>